Hello viewers and today I've got another off meta loadout that you can use in Warzone. This is the Cold War M16 and it was definitely one of the best weapons that you could possibly use a couple of seasons ago but it underwent quite a significant nerf meaning that at long range the recoil can really plague you when you're trying to take down enemies. And so for this combination of attachments, I thought I would forego that long range effectiveness and simply just focus on the short to medium range effectiveness of this weapon. This means that I'm not going to be going for a highly magnified scope. I just want to go for something like a red dot and I want to focus on still reducing that vertical recoil. But as we're not using a magnified scope, it's not going to feel as pronounced as it otherwise would in the previous meta loadouts. But before I break down these attachments for you and show you some awesome gameplay that I've got with this M16, it would be amazing if you could consider subscribing to the channel. As always, if you are a frequent viewer of the channel, I try and upload these videos every single day. But if you're new here, then it would be awesome if you could consider subscribing and leaving a like on this video so that you don't miss a future upload and you let that YouTube algorithm know that you want to see more of this content. Feel free to pause the video here as these are the attachments that I am using. And so starting off in the muzzle attachment slot, I am using the Agency Silencer. We like to think of this as a beefed up version of the monolithic suppressor because as well as providing that all important sound suppression, we do get around about a 5% reduction to vertical recoil, meaning that that three burst cluster is going to be a little bit tighter when we pull the trigger, as well as around about a 20% boost to bullet velocity and a 10 to 15% boost to effective damage range. I'm hoping that those statistics are fairly accurate because true game data the place where I get most of my statistics from doesn't actually have any of the tactical rifle statistics especially with their attachments uh, published onto his channel and so I'm simply going off what Call of Duty claim these attachments to do but it definitely served me well in the gameplay that I've got for you. Even though I did mention I don't want to be focusing on the long range quite so much, we still need effective damage range to be improved as much as possible for those medium range engagements because as this is a three burst weapon, you can sometimes miss one or two bullets in that burst and so even one bullet with a slightly higher damage potential can really make the difference and so I'm going for the 20.5 inch match grade barrel for the biggest boost to effective damage range out of all of the barrels I'm pretty sure. In order to tighten up that burst cluster even more I'm using the field agent foregrip in the under barrel attachment slot because this will both provide a boost to horizontal recoil control and vertical recoil control. I think it's between 7 and 10 percent meaning that essentially when you pull the trigger the gun isn't going to recoil left right or up quite as much as it normally would. In order to make the most of that vertical and horizontal recoil control that we should be getting, I want to use a sight that's nice and clear compared to the iron sights and the quick dot LED was what I went for. It obviously is completely up to you what you want to go for, but I just wanted to give this attachment a go, see if I can unlock a couple of reticles for it as well. But of course, the aim down sight time penalty from these sights is only about four milliseconds. So it really is up to you what you go for, be that there quick dot LED like this or the Hawksmoor or maybe something like the Millstock Reflex which is a tiny bit more zoomed in like the Cobra Red Dot as well which is even more zoomed in that's around about a 1.5 time zoom but anyway as I said completely up to you. And for the final attachment, as I mentioned, this is going to be a short to medium range X16 build. And so we want to be fairly maneuverable and agile while we're fighting the enemy. And so the SAS combat stock is what I have gone for in the stock attachment slot. Because while I'm firing, the firing movement speed will be improved. That means that I can keep moving nice and steadily and not slowing down too much when I'm peeking from cover to cover or maybe side strafing while I'm firing at the enemy. I'm going to be a harder target to hit. And while I'm not firing, I can peek out of cover while I'm aiming in with this additional aim walking movement speed. But let me know down in the comments if you do give this off meta M16 a go. It's definitely nowhere near as good as it used to be before it was quite heavily nerfed. But I'd love to see what you think of it nonetheless. And leave a like if you enjoy the video and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Thank you very much for watching and enjoy the gameplay. Okay, so this game didn't start brilliantly, as you can see. 
Charlie, my uh, brother who I'm playing this game with, actually went and tried to go and kill the AFK players as I dropped on the shop. But unfortunately, two players dropped with me. I wanted to try and put some pressure on them as I've got some ammo. I don't know if they've got their loadout yet. Well, they've bought a loadout. They haven't chucked it yet, obviously. Positive ID on the bounty target. Sort them out. Sort of gave myself away a bit then, really. But, uh, I'm just going to wait for Charlie to make his way over here. Fuck it. I'm driving. He's driving. There you go, he basically ran one over and grenade launched the other guy. But there we go, we've definitely got enough for a loadout. We completed the bounty and we have got a hunter back. So we can get even more money. Of course, no, no, look, another team has arrived though. Got contact. Got an armor break, plenty of pressure on him. Should have time now for us both to run over to that loadout and get going. But I thought, actually, while I'm here, I'll grab a UAV so I know that it's definitely safe to cross. Here. And as you can see, they have fully pulled away. They probably thought that we were going to rush them, but I'd rather get my loadout and live to fight another day. I've got my M16, and they did just take a shot at me then. So let's go and get that contraband done. So Charlie grabs a car. I jump in. It's just down this hill here. Charlie decides to take a shortcut and I manage to read a small novel in the time it takes to land. Right, there was just a shot up there. I don't know if you saw that on the mini-map. On the hill by that restaurant and the little... Uh, the small houses. Need mid -cal. I've got about six shots left. Got a little hit on him. I was defending the wrong point. I was looking up the cliff hill, you see. But obviously they were going to come from that place. One guy's rushing. Finished it with my last pull of the trigger. But there's his teammate with uh, dead silence, so I didn't really have much of a chance, really. But anyway, we're coming back now. There he is. He hasn't actually managed to get up his bait, by the looks of it. So it's two versus one, sort of. Get the kill. I think that three hit markers then was pretty important, so good little teamwork there. And of course, I've still got my M16, so that's the main thing I'm happy about, really. We moved over to ATC. There was people in ATC, and then we heard two loadouts drop. Unless that was just a bit of a sound bug. We thought it was a bit weird, being as... There's the loadout, so they've actually got access to three loadouts now, but Charlie rushes one of them, but I told him, look, he's on the roof. Jumps off, we get a little double team on the one guy. I've got no idea where his teammate is. We don't know if he's still in the tower or on the roof. So we decide, being as we're probably going to have to cross over airport, we start moving. Charlie's seen him in ATC, but he's got a sniper. There he is. So one of them jumped for that set of loadouts next to ours, and the other stayed up there to cover, but luckily, and just in time, I managed to get Charlie up. Put a bit of pressure on that other guy with my M16. I was happy I was able to hit those shots, but it's quite hard to tell. How many bullets actually hit him? I think only two out of the six you know, bullets area. probably hit him, really. But move to this little showroom. Guy dropped in, and we know that there's a loadout here, Gas so we went to go and check this loadout. 
and he wasn't there, which we thought was strange. Checking around. And then Charlie's seen him just gone over the brow of the roof of that building. Now bikes come in, so second little bit of potential action. Now this guy was clearly after the supply run, but he's realised it's on the roof and he doesn't know what to do now. Charlie finishes him off, and there he is, falling over. Less than 50 enemies remain. Enemy UAV overhead. Located a bounty Let's contract. go for that. Bounty contract. Copy that. It's always good to play aggressive. There was someone Everyone's on the heartbeat at this point in the match, and we could not, and they just kept moving. But he really caught me out then. Obviously, I'm playing on constant, and if I had an extended field of view, I think I'd have definitely... Uh, had a better chance of getting him. But at this particular point in the match, Charlie was definitely carrying me for this little fight. Charlie also told me that when he killed him, the death con was, I've got money, I'm coming back. So pretty much gave away his tactics. So we're getting ready for them to return. I think he's already come back. I completely underestimated that guy then. I thought he'd just have a pistol, so... You know, he's got a PPSH, but luckily we've both got respawns, so we land on those loadouts. Immediately start getting shot, and Charlie drops his money, so at least one of us has got a respawn now. So we've got a chance of, even if we die here, we can still sort of come back. There's loads of players everywhere. Got that down, but then got third parted or fourth or fifth parted probably. But this was a really weird kill cam. Very confident, just a single shot. Anyway, I go and grab that supply run that I remember the guy that we killed couldn't get. And then I borrow his bike because I figure he probably doesn't need it anymore. I'll speed things up here because I'm terrible at using a bike. See, I am terrible at using bikes. I crashed into about just about everything really within my path. But the main thing is I got Charlie back and luckily found a couple boxes. I scared myself because I didn't realise that I'd open that door. So I know that there's players through the side of this courtyard. There they are. Don't quite have enough for a respawn, so I'm being a bit cautious. There he is. And he's just activated his recon there. Target appears hostile. I've noticed. There's his recon. Bounty target is up. Let's get it done. I figured he was going to the shop, but his mate's going to be watching over, perhaps. Bounty target is down. Well done. Charlie's found him. Gas is moving. Got the armor break. His mate's on the roof, so I can't go around the corner really much now. I saw that guy coming and I was reloading so I was just like, I've just got to stay still if I move he's going to see me and luckily we're able to finish him off and we scrounged together the money that we got from killing them and we've got our loadout again. We're just on the edge of the circle but we just sort of want to gatekeep everyone coming from Boneyard or people potentially camping on the other side of this main road. And Charlie has found someone on the other side of this main road so I'm rushing up here to try and help him. And it's just a matter of waiting now for them to come out of cover. Obviously they can come from multiple directions, but we know that there's a duo over there now, because Charlie UAV did get there. a little look at them. Gas is moving. So hard to see them. Just getting used to this bullet velocity. Truth in contact. Now I've got it figured out pretty much. 
there you go. I figured out the bullet. That was my first sort of long-range engagement with that weapon. So I was just getting used to it. But once I'd sort of found that sweet spot at that sort of distance, I was a little bit better. But yeah. Charlie asked for some ammunition. And we just got to head into the circle now, really. Safe zone relocated. I got a really important shot then on that guy I reckon and plus with that stun it kept him still for long enough but of course as is always the way in Warzone we got shot in the back the people from that big warehouse garage place managed to get hit on us but there's plenty of defilade in this little bit of a uh, sort of bumpiness in the ground so Charlie manages to get a revive on me and we've still got some work to do moving into the circle how about we walk this off? We guess right. We've got to go for the petrol station, really. So over we go. There's going to be people coming from storage and the warehouse. And as you can see, the Carly sticks are a little bit broken at the moment because all you have to do is simply swing those sticks and they will just lock on to you and they'll hit you and down you in, in two hits. And the lock on is ridiculous. You can lock onto people that aren't even on your screen. Anyway, Charlie is continuing the rest of this game. This is a standard Krieg setup that he's using. Charlie's very much into using the meta setups. He just wants to get as many kills as he can. Nice and sort of successful game. Whereas I'm sort of the opposite. As you can see, this Krieg is ridiculously good is the person firing it of course notice Charlie's got seven view people watching him at the moment and it is a 1v1 it's just all about getting that position now for this 1v1 you've got to catch him out in the open just like that and I am Shouting at Charlie now, just kill him, just kill him, he's going to get himself up, but Charlie always BMing the other teams, and there is the win. Charlie got 14 kills, I think he got about 6, that's 20 kills overall, and a really good, I think that was one of my first games actually, with that combination of attachments with the M16, and I have to say, it's as good at the moment I'd say now at the short and medium range as it was at the long range you know a couple months ago so yeah thank you very much for watching if you did make it this far it was a really good game we've actually been winning quite a lot lately and so uh, plenty more wins to come on the channel very soon but anyway leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you'd like to see more thank you very much for watching and I shall see you in the next one